I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'd like to welcome you to the first in a two-part look at the role of an access server primarily in a Cisco home lab. Even if you're not putting together a home lab right now, though, I strongly recommend you watch this video and the second part in the series for preparing for your CSENT and CCNA exams because there will be some commands in here that are helpful for your exam prep as well. You also hear the term access server and it tends to suggest something that it really isn't. And in our business, as soon as you hear the word server, what do you think about? Well, you really don't think about a Cisco router. You think about a typical Microsoft server or regardless of what the operating system is, you tend to think of just a typical computer server. But that's not really what an access server is. And while an access server is not a requirement for a Cisco home lab, it really does make your life a lot easier. And we're going to look at why in the first part of this two-part series. Now, typically, when you're starting a Cisco home lab, you may buy a kit. You may get several routers at one time and several switches. But many of us, and particularly for me, that's how I got started with a home lab years back, is that you really buy one piece at a time. And of course, we've got a PC here, we've got one switch, we've got one router. And the cable that we use here, and that's definitely something you want to know for your exams as well, is a rollover cable. If we are directly connecting a PC to the console port of a Cisco router or switch. Well, when you have just one router and one switch, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that, you can get some good practice in with that. You don't mind moving the console cable around that much. But as your home lab grows, and it will, especially if you go after then your NP and of course your CCIE, all of a sudden one day, you know, you get that bug and you start adding routers to it and you get over the initial apprehension of working with the real thing and you say, hey, I want to get another router. And, you know, boy, if I had two switches, then I could really work with root bridges and spanning tree protocol. So uh, to use grow in that way that we use in networks, you want to grow your home lab, right? You always want to add to it. And you will be doing that, believe me, even if you start with one router or one switch. Well, what you get a little bit tired of here, though, is moving that console cable around. And I've been there. I've done that. You know, you're trying to just rack up your equipment maybe near your laptop or near your PC and you're continually moving the console cable around it does get to be a little bit of an annoyance so what you can get to alleviate that annoyance and make your entire lab accessible from the internet from a remote location is an access server and in this case an access server is simply going to be another Cisco router. It's a kind of specialized router. You can't just use any router for an AS because you need some async ports on it. And one thing that I want to mention before we, well, let's go ahead and look at the visual of what we're going to do here. And again, we've got an access server and you can see it's, it's another Cisco router. And we've got physical cables going from the access server to each particular router. Now the kind of async ports you have on your access server determine the cabling you're going to use but typically what you're going to use is an octal cable and the octal cable as the name suggests it's got eight cables in it and it's one connection to the access server. It's a wide connection and then at the other end of the cable you have eight separate RJ45 connectors that snap right into the console ports and you just connect those to your other routers and switches. And if you've watched any of my video boot camps for the CSENT, CCNA, or CCNP, then you've seen me work on the real routers and switches during the labs, and you'll notice that I'm not moving a cable around, but I'm continually going back to one device as I go around my home lab, and that's an access server. That's what I'm using. And in the demo part of this, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But this is what we can do. And also, if you want to be able to reach your home lab from the net, you can get a static IP address. You can assign it to that access server. You know, hook that up to your cable modem, whatever your particular connection is at home. And you can reach your access server from the net and then connect to all your other devices from there. So that octal cable 
is really the connection that you're going to use for this. And again, we'll look at the configuration in the second part of this series. But there's one thing I want to mention. You do not need to spend a lot of money on your access server. Uh, one popular one, it's, a, it's an older router, but it's a 2509. It makes a fantastic access server. Those can actually be a little difficult to find at times. Uh, eBay is a great place to start looking. Uh, you may want to check at www.ciscokits.com, which is where I get a lot of my equipment from. And certainly there are plenty of other reputable used equipment vendors out there on the web as well. You can ask around there. But the reason I mentioned you don't need to spend a bundle on the access server is that occasionally if you go out to eBay and you just do a search on Cisco Access Server, you can see some very high-end routers that cost very high-end money. You don't need one of those. Also, you can still use your Access Server in any unused ports as part of your home lab. I tend to dedicate mine, my Access Servers and my pods just act as the Access Server, but if you do have other interfaces on it, which you probably do, you can incorporate those in your home lab as well. So really, this alleviates you having to move the cable around, which does get to be a pain. Uh, again, you have to get a special Cisco router. Not every Cisco router can serve as an access server. But again, uh, not pitching eBay too hard, but if you go out there and just do a Cisco access server uh, search, you can find a lot of different access servers. So again, we need an octal cable for that. And that's really all you need. And the great thing about getting the configuration in place is that once you do that, you can just leave it alone. It's not something you have to change continually. But there are a couple of little gotchas, as there always are, uh, in the configuration of any Cisco device. So we're going to take a look at those in the second part of our Access Server tutorial. Also, I want to invite you to come out to the website, www.thebryantadvantage.com, on the Tutorials page. I've got over 200 free tutorials for you on Cisco and Microsoft. We've got new videos coming up all the time, including the new video pop quizzes, some of which you'll see here on YouTube, but some are exclusive to the site. So I invite you to come on out and spend some time with us. And I thank you for watching this. We'll have the second part of this series up very shortly. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you on the website.